What I want to do in this video is to introduce you to some of the equipment and some of the procedures that you'll be using in your PV92 PCR lab. Uh, so here's the equipment. So just to kind of give you an idea of what you're going to have, you should have at your position a rack that should have a tube with a screw tap, screw top I guess, and this should have what we call an Instagene matrix solution. You also have an empty tube this is a micro centrifuge tube and it holds 1.5 milliliters or 1500 microliters. You should have a sharpie or a permanent marker. Always good to mark your samples and your tube so you know whose is whose. You should have a solution or a saline solution that you'll use as a mouthwash. You'll have this in a cup and you should have 10 mils of this. You'll also have two micro pipettes. You actually may have three at your station, but we'll use two. One will measure one milliliter or 1,000 microliters. It will have a blue top here and also a larger diameter tip on the end. You'll also have what we call a P20. It has a yellow on the top and it will measure two to 20 microliters and it'll have a nice point on the end. With those, you should have tips. So there should be a box with kind of small white tips that look roughly like this. That will be used on the P20. You will also have a larger blue tip and that will be used for the P1000 or the larger one that will measure one mil. Uh, always have tips on it so you don't contaminate the actual instrument. And as always, have the instructions so you can kind of check the boxes as you go and always read through them completely through so you know what to expect. Piece of equipment you're gonna run into is what we call a micro centrifuge. This is what's actually going to be able to spin the cells down in your micro centrifuge tubes. Yours may look a little different from this, but they will all essentially work the same. And I'll show you here right now how to load those in there so you have a good understanding of what's going on. I wanna show you quickly how to use this micro centrifuge. So this one will look a little different than the one that you'll use in lab. But what I'm going to do here is for your actual first centrifuging step, you're going to have to spin this at top speed. And what that means is these can spin at different revolutions per minute, or what we call times G is what we call relative centrifugal force. So this is actually the force times gravity, or times the force of gravity, if you think about an airplane and they can do four Gs in a turn. Same concept here. But what we want to do on the first one is set this to maximum speed. So on this particular instrument, I'm going to set up a program. And actually, I need to set this to two minutes. And then I'm going to turn this knob so we get up to the actual maximum speed of 14,000 RPM. I will then set this instrument so it's ready to go. And now we're ready to load it. So what we're going to do here is we'll spin at 14,000 RPM for two minutes. Now what's important is how we actually load the samples. So I have two samples and what's important is we want to make sure they're loaded equally. So they want to have the same mass to them. And then we need to load them equally apart from each other because we need to balance this. Otherwise the actual rotor itself can wiggle a lot and we would run into quite a few problems. So to do that there's usually some nice markers to help us. So if you can see here's some two white lines that may be a guide and there's also numbers. So what I'm going to do quickly is load this to show you what it looks like. So notice the two tubes are right across from each other and then in this particular one I'm going to put a lid on it, what we call an aerosol lid and then also that will keep it from making a pretty nasty sound. Then I'm going to close the lid and start it. Sorry, start. As you can see it's going to start timing, but it'll also ramp up to the appropriate speed. After two minutes, it will stop automatically. I'm going to stop a little prematurely here. It will then slow down. And then on this particular instrument, when it reaches zero, the lid will pop open. Then I can remove my samples 
and be careful you don't want to disturb it but then you will have your stuff at the bottom of the tube or what we call a pellet there should also be two water baths in your lab one should be set at approximately 56 degrees Celsius and another one that should approach 100 degrees Celsius this particular instrument doesn't actually get up to 100 because it's boiling but it should get up to approximately 99 degrees the point of the 56 degrees is to kind of dissociate your cells so after you centrifuge your cells down you're going to need to disperse them, break them open, and so you'll incubate for, t incubate for 10 minutes at 56 degrees. And then at a later subsequent step, you want to actually break the cells open because you need to get through the plasma membrane or the cell membrane and also through the nuclear membrane to release your chromosomal DNA. And so by approximately boiling it, you can bust those cell membranes open and that will enable you to release the DNA. So you're going to see a 56 degree water bath and also a water bath at approximately 100 degrees Celsius. And once again, those will be used to kind of dissociate the cells and then eventually lice or break open those cells. The first step that you're going to do in this actual protocol is to label your tubes. So it's always a good idea to just put your initials or something on the tubes so you can keep track of them. Otherwise, you'll misplace samples or confuse samples. After that, we will actually take the saline solution here and put this in our mouth and swish it around for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, you want to spit it back into it. You want to be fairly vigorous with swishing. The whole idea is to release some of those buccal cells so you can actually have DNA to work with. Okay, our next step in the procedure is to actually take some of these cells and pellet them or gather them at the bottom of our microcentrifuge tube. So I'm going to take this, and if it's been sitting for a while, make sure you kind of swish it up a little bit so you got all the cells resuspended. And then I'm gonna take 1,000 microliters or one mil with this pipette and transfer it from this tube into this tube. Just kind of a reminder, I'm going to show you how to quickly interact with this micropipette and set it if it's not at the appropriate volume. So just to make things easy, what we have here is this pipette is actually set to approximately 755 microliters. We need it to be at 1,000 or 1 mil. So what we do here is we got a lock button. We're going to undo the lock button to kind of loose it up. We will then come to this instrument and then turn it until we get to one, zero, zero, zero. What that's gonna tell us now is we have 1,000 microliters. Once you have the appropriate amount, you need to lock it, otherwise the volume will fluctuate. Also, quick review, there are actually two stops to this pipette. So there's a first one here and then beyond that, it'll be a slightly resistant, you can push it. When you go to measure your cells, you will go down to the first stop first, and then slowly put your tip here, when we put the tip on, into your sample, and then slowly bring it up to draw your sample into the tip. To get rid of the cells, you will slowly push down to the first stop, and to expel the rest that's in the tip, push it to the second stop. To get rid of your tip, this is the ejector button, and as you can see, it moves that and it will throw the tip off. Okay, let's show this in action. So now I've got my micro pipette set to one mil or 1,000 microliters. I'm going to take my blue tip and gently press it on so it's in there. Please don't jam hard, otherwise you can break the micro pipette. Swirl my cells, make sure they're good and suspended, and then get my cells. What I'm going to do is depress first to the first step, stop, put my tip into the solution, you don't need to jam it all the way down there, and then slowly draw up my one mil. As you can see, I got it in the pipette, move your tubes around, open your tube, and then transfer it in. Remember in this case, 
we'll go down to the second stop just to get rid of the cells. I like to have a container to eject my tip in and now I centrifuge these cells at maximum speed for 14,000 RPM on my instrument or whatever it is on yours for two minutes. Okay, after centrifugation, you should have something that looks like this. So I've got kind of a black background here so you can kind of see what's going on. As you can see, there's a white little pellet at the bottom. That should be your cells. So in terms of how we speak about this type of stuff, the little thing, the little substance at the bottom is what we call the pellet, and then the liquid is what we call the supernatant. And what you need to really pay attention to is where is the molecule that you're looking for. So in this particular case, our DNA is still in the pellet. And in the instructions they say it should be about a match size. So you can see that's pretty decent. So you really want to make sure that is the size of pellet that you have. If you do not have a pellet that size, what you can do is pour this off the liquid, make sure you keep the pellet here, and then add more of your cell suspension and centrifuge again. The point is you need to have cells, otherwise you can't have DNA. So once again, pellet is a little white thing at the bottom, and then the supernatant is the liquid. What we want to do is pour this off, or what we call decant, and then we're going to keep the cells at the bottom. I always like to just have an empty container I can do this in. This is nothing fancy. We want to kind of just pour that liquid off, shake it a little bit. You might be left with a little bit at the bottom, that's okay. What I'll actually do, take a paper towel, tap it, just to get rid of that. Be careful because sometimes that pellet can be dislodged, but it is okay to have a little bit of liquid. You actually need to have a little bit of liquid so you can do the next step. So we now look at this again. We have our pellet and then a little bit of liquid there. What we're gonna do next is resuspend this. So I'm gonna take the small pipette, set it to 20 microliters, and then pipette it up and down, or actually I can just flick it like this. Shake it down a little bit. But you need to loosen all of those cells up. You need to get rid of the pellet and now we have our cells not in a pellet anymore, but actually in suspension. And now I can transfer that liquid into my Instagene matrix. So flick, get it really resuspended, shake it down a little bit so the liquid's at the bottom. And now I can take my P20. This one isn't set. Set it to 20 real quick. Lock it. Get a tip. Once again, gently put it on. And now I've got my InstaGene matrix. I'm going to flick that, get that nice and resuspended. And now I'm going to transfer over my cells. First stop, put it in my sample, draw it up. It may take a couple times to get all 20 microliters, but the whole point is I got lots and lots of cells. Put it in and get the rest of my cells. All right, now my cells are in there. I'm going to just gently pipette up and down with my pipette, slowly. That kind of gets everything in suspension. And then I will move on to the next step, which is heating these up to 56 degrees for 10 minutes. So remember what we're going to do in this protocol. This will go into the water bath. Make sure it's nice and suspended. Do your flick again. And then five minutes, take it back out, flick it again just to make sure those cells are loose, and do it for another five minutes at 56 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, it's been five minutes at 56 degrees. Go back to your tube, flick it, because the cells actually settle down a little bit, get them resuspended, and put them in for another five minutes. Okay, after another five minutes has gone by for a total of 10 minutes, we're gonna take our cells out, flick them and resuspend them, and now we're gonna do five minutes Take a little floaty thing here. Remember this water can be quite hot. And now another five minutes at 100 degrees to break the cells open. Make sure you flick them, resuspend it so the cells can get broken apart. Okay, we are done incubating at 100 degrees Celsius. So now we need to centrifuge everything down so remember the goal here, or the hope, is that we broke the cells open uh, by breaking the plasma membrane, the cell membrane, and the nuclear membrane. And so what we're actually going to have here is the DNA should now be found in the supernatant, so the actual liquid part, after we centrifuge this down. The instagene matrix is there to bind ions like magnesium, and they're there because magnesium will help enzymes like DNAs work. And if DNA is working, it will break apart our DNA, and we don't want that to occur. So what we're going to do now is centrifuge this, but a little twist. Remember before we centrifuged at full speed, we need to centrifuge at 6,000 times G. And so we're going to have to change the centrifuge to do that, and we will do it for five minutes. So I'm going to show you how I do it on this instrument. Your instrument may be a little bit different. I'm going to go into program here, so I'm going to select again. And now I am going to set my time to five minutes. All right. And now, whoops, I need to get out of here. I need to switch to actual RCF, or what we call relative centrifugal force. So at full speed, we spun it at 18,620 times G. We need to get down to 6,000. Let's go back into the program again. We got our five minutes. Okay. On to the next one, and now we need to move this down to 6,000. So quite a bit slower. The goal here is if we spin it too fast, actually, we may centrifuge or pellet the chromosomal DNA, which is what we're after. So we want to make sure we do it at a slower speed so our DNA remains in solution or in the liquid part. So that's why it's crucial that we reduce our speed down. We also don't want to put our chromosomal DNA through a lot of stress. Now we got it there where we want it, set it, and now we're good to centrifuge. Remember, we want to make sure it's balanced. We're going to put the lid on. My samples are labeled so I know what is what. And now I will centrifuge for five minutes. Okay, now that the centrifugation is done, we should have our tube. Now we want to look at what we got here. You can see a slight pellet, kind of fuzzy material right there. In this case, we want what's in the liquid. We do not want what's in the pellet. So we gotta make sure we don't disturb this and we will move on to our next step. That's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see a little pellet there. Okay, our next step will be fairly simple. What we need to do is take 20 microliters of the supernatant and transfer it to a tiny little tube like this. We call these PCR tubes. This will allow temperature to be transferred very easily into our sample. And then this will be given to our laboratory technician so she can set up our PCR reactions. So in this case, we're gonna use our P20 again. It's been set to 20 before. Make sure we get a tip, gently put it on, 
And then remember, we got to be gentle with this sample. We do not want to disturb it. I'm actually going to show you how to interact with it in another way. We do not want to come anywhere near that pellet. So we're going to depress. Remember, let's depress to the first stop. Now we're going to put it into the sample. And notice where my tip is. I don't want my tip anywhere near that pellet. And I'm slowly going to draw it up. And now I have 20 microliters in my pipette tip. I can now take that back to my tiny little tube and put it down into the bottom. We want to be very careful here because if we get any of that instagene matrix in that tube, we will have problems doing the PCR reaction. Alright, now you just got to label that tube probably on the side with your Sharpie with the initials and then the PCR reaction will be done.